The following graph shows the first ionization energy for a few elements. Now, it's important that you understand what ionization energy is. Of course, we have made videos on that. And if you haven't watched those, those videos on ionization energy, then of course you should do that before trying to do this um, question. Pretty much what ionization energy is, is if we look at a, um, let's say we've got a, an atom, okay? So in the center, we've got a nucleus. Now in the nucleus, you have protons. Let's give this one two protons and it's got uh, neutrons. So let's put three neutrons. Then on the outside, it's got energy levels. And in those energy levels, we have electrons. Now let's say for example, the electrons are green. So those electrons are negative, remember that? And then let's say on the outside here, we've got three. Okay, now remember that electrons are negative. Now, let's say for example, you and I, we would like to walk up to this atom and rob it of its electrons, would like to take its electrons away. So we walk up to this atom, we hold our gun to its face and we're like, yo bro, give me your electrons now, you know? And so what we do is we always try go for the electrons that are on the outside first, because they are the easiest to remove. But they are gonna be a little bit challenging to pull away, why? The reason is, can you see that in this nucleus, there are some positive protons, there they are. Now, what would those positive protons be doing to these electrons? Well, opposites attract. So there is some type of force that we are gonna have to apply, or we're gonna need energy to be able to pull this electron away. That amount of energy that we need is called ionization energy. So ionization energy is the energy needed to remove an electron from an atom. And then just remember to say the silly little part at the end, they, the teachers want you to say it, in the gas phase. Your teacher might use the word gaseous. So it's the amount of energy that you need to remove an electron from an atom, which is in the gas phase. Okay, so that's this question. This question, compare the ionization energy of elements in group number 18. Okay, so I'll have to go get a periodic table now. Group number 18, periods number one and number two. Okay, so let's go grab an electron, not an electron, a periodic table. So here we have our periodic table. Now they said that it must be in group 18. Okay, so that's group 18. Remember the ones going down, those are groups. And then they said period number one and two. So periods is the row. So this is row one and, well, this is row one and this is row two. So it's in group 18 and it's row one and two. So they want us to compare this one and this one. Okay, so what we need to know is that this is helium, okay? So if I had to draw helium, it definitely has a um, nucleus, right? And it's got two protons. So I'm gonna put two positives. It has a total mass of four, so that means it must also have two neutrons because two plus two is four. Remember that your protons and your neutrons is what gives you the mass. Now, it's gonna be in energy level number one, right? Because it's in the top row, so it's only gonna have one ring going around the outside, and it's gonna have two electrons. Why? Because if it's a normal helium atom, the number of protons and electrons is the same. So that's helium. That is what a atom of helium would look like. Now, if we had to do neon, well, neon also has a um, nucleus, of course, and it's got 10 protons, okay? So I'm definitely not gonna go draw 10 protons, but I'm just gonna say 10 pluses. And then it's in row number two. It's in row number two. So it's gonna have two rings going around it, okay? And it's gonna have 10 electrons. So your first ring, as I've showed before, always has two electrons, and then the rest goes um, on the outside like this, three, four, it's a bit squashed up there, and then five, six, seven, eight. So it has a total of eight on the outside, two on the inside, and so it's got 10 electrons in total. 
Now, I've gone over this in detail before with ionization energy. And the main factor we need to see here is that this distance is a lot less than this distance over here. Because remember, when you and I want to go rob these, we, we want to go steal electrons, we always start on the outside. So because this one has two rows or two energy levels, it's going to have a total, it's going to have a much larger distance than this one over here. So which one do you think we should rob? Like which one would it be really easy to rob? Well, remember that electrons are negative. Okay, so we know that there is an attraction over here, and we know that there is an attraction over here. However, this attraction is going to be much larger than this attraction. Why? Well, it's just because of the distance. If you put two magnets close together, it's going to be much stronger than if you put two magnets far apart. So which one will be easier for us to remove the electron? Well, it will be this one. Because this distance is larger, so that means this force of attraction is weaker. So it'll be easier for us to take this electron away. So that means we need less energy. So the ionization energy will be lower. So we can just say that um, ionization energy of um, neon will be lower than helium because neon radius, remember this is the radius, is larger than helium. That's all we need to say because it's only for two marks, okay?